Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Florida State University, right outside the Publix where Jameis Winston stole those crab legs, it's College Weekly Live with Jack Carpenter. Tonight, we sit down with platinum selling DJ duo, Dubs. I'm Greg Serene, and now it's your host, Jack Carpenter! Thanks for showing up. Thanks for watching. You're watching College Weekly Live, and we are coming to you from Florida State University. <laughs> now, we've only been in Tallahassee for about a week, so we don't know everything, but we do know these three things. One, Tallahassee has the most right swipes for women on Tinder in the United woo, States woo, of America. Yeah. Uh, two, the girls in Tallahassee. Now, the girls here, they wear short shorts so short, you're not sure if it's part of the shirt or just short shorts. <laughs> and three, depending on your maturity level, uh, the state capitol building right here in Tallahassee kind of looks like a dick. Greg, do you think it looks like a dick? Oh, yeah, I definitely think it looks like a dick. Nice. So, we're coming to you guys live from outside the Publix here in Tallahassee, Florida, and we chose this location because a lot of stuff has gone down inside of this Publix, right? For sharks. Let's see, uh, we used the bathroom there before the show, um, Jameis Winston stole the crab legs from here, which left him looking like this. <laughs> and guess what happened this week? Check it out. World star! World star! Okay then. Go ahead, bro. Get your thing, dog. I mean, hey, come on. When you have three Floridians and only two rotisserie chickens left for sale, there's gonna be a fight. It's simple meth. <laughs> <laughs> Above all, this Publix, this exact Publix in Tallahassee, was ranked one of the top ten places to talk to women in America. Uh, that seems a little thirsty, Jack. Huh? I mean... It was the best place to talk to girls, and you roll up with a talk show. <laughs> Next stop. Seriously, Tallahassee, very cool town. Great campus, great downtown. Uh, can we get one of those cool montages over like one of them hip hop beats? Yeah. Halloween. Taliban. Taliban. I'm gonna shoot you. Yeah. Jump in, jump in, jump in. Them boys are the something. They just spent like two or three weeks out of the country. That was cool. Glad we did that. Well, I'll tell you guys, when we first got to Tallahassee, we hopped into an Uber, and he's bringing us to our new place, and our Uber driver looks back at us and he says, you know, Tallahassee is a drinking town with a football problem. And I laughed super hard because I've never heard that one before, but it ended up, he was 100% correct. Everybody in Tallahassee loves doing alcohol, and they're always thinking about it. Seriously, they are always thinking about it. Don't believe me? Just watch. Nice. Well, I'm excited for tonight's show. We get to sit down with Dubs, the DJs. Dubs with a V. It's two brothers, super nice guys, and they're world-renowned. Their songs are getting hundreds of millions of views. They're headlining Tomorrowland this year. And when I sit down with them, I get to join the Woozy Gang, so stick around for that. Greg, you ever been to Tomorrowland? Oh, yeah. I went yesterday. Oh, you did? Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> well, guys, it's nearing the end of September, which means school has been in session for about a month now, and that's a perfect amount of time to know whether or whether or not you like the classes you're taking, the teachers you have, the major you're in, or most intrusively, your roommate. Oh, boy. Greg, did you like your roommates? Uh, yeah, I lived in a suite, so I actually had three roommates, and yeah, they were all pretty great means I was the bad one. But this is a legitimate concern among a lot of college students, which is why we sent out our very own field reporter, Kyle, to talk to the student body at Florida State and find out what they really do think about their roommate. Don't giggle. This is very important stuff. Kyle? Yes, Jack. Odd roommates are far too common on the college campus. Let me tell you a quick thing about one of my old roommates. He used to pee on his own feet because he said it cured his athlete's foot. And you know what I said? I said, wow. But we're out here on Florida State's campus, and we're going to ask college freshmen, sophomores, juniors, whoever will give us their time of day, just how odd their roommates are. Hey, you, come here. 
We're asking students about their roommate experiences. Do you have a roommate? Yeah, I've got uh, two roommates. One roommate. Have you had a bad experience with a roommate? Yes, I have. Nah, just dirty roommates. Wait, is this actually gonna be like posted? Because I love her, she's my best friend, but like... Yeah. Would have his girlfriend over in a dorm every night and she had a house. Ah, that's completely just disrespectful. Yeah, a little bit, but you know, it was all right. She was, she was pretty cool. Was she hot? Yeah, she was. Um, we met on Facebook. What do you think about your roommate? I don't have one. Ooh, how'd you get so lucky? I switched out. Did you have a roommate before? He was really weird. Well, I mean, she's standing right there, so I can't really say that. <laughs> do you know what a brony is? No, a oh, My Little Pony, and it's a guy that's into that, and he was one of those. And he kept having like all of his friends over all night, and they would play Dungeons and Dragons and talk about brownies. There are some times when it's when there's no roommates there, and it's nice to have an alone time. But I think overall, it's a good experience. Do you have any uh, kind of crazy stories about having a roommate or anything like that? Freshman year, uh, my dorm. It's oh. My freshman year of college. Came back one day, middle of the day. Uh, opened my door. She was like, should I, can I say oh, it? I all like, of it. <laughs> she was like a drug dealer, which is like. And I'm not going to say exactly what he was doing because I don't know for sure, but came back in to my roommate butt naked on his bed with a little bit of baby oil next to him. They all have girlfriends and they're not as much fun anymore. Have you ever had a bad roommate? Not a bad roommate, but um, my roommate my first semester they were all from school together and they all spoke Spanish all the time they would be like in the other room like talking Spanish I'm like thinking are they talking about me? they were talking shit about you <laughs> probably I mean he's on the basketball team that's true shout out Wilson uh, shout out my guy you know he does actually like ponies a lot if you could say one thing to one of your close homies with the girlfriend what would you say let's throw pre-games again Honestly, Brett, I never want to live with you again after that year we went through in the house. All right? That's all I got to say. I think you've got to blast off, you've got to go fast, or you lose an opportunity. All my life I want money and power, respect my mind, or die from less shout. You guys don't sell wine. You guys sell fun. Hello, everybody. We're sitting down with Dubs without a U, but a V. Welcome, Dubs. With the V. With the V. v. How long have you guys been working together? Uh, I mean, we've been working on, like, projects since we were about... 12, 13 years old, man. A lot of people argue DJs aren't really musicians or you're not really that talented, but are you? Like, do you guys really play instruments? I mean, we, we come from, once again, like a very musical background. We taught each other everything. You know, once, once we started developing into like the new generation of what we became, uh, Chris, Chris went to university and I would still send him acapellas of like, of Dub's vocals, like stuff mm -hmm. that like Gold Skies kind of sounds like, yeah. but more with like a reggae vibe to it. And he started learning Ableton and started remixing our vocals. And that's when people were like, this is kind of like, this is really interesting, like what, what you guys are coming up with. And now, by the looks of it, you guys love marijuana. Am I wrong? No, you're, you're definitely right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Right now, before, honestly, this is something new for me. Before okay. I would just light it up, but a uh, homie uh, West Coast Cure rolled through with like, so much of this wax, it's like crazy. It Good won the again. Cannabis Cup though. Oh, it won the Cannabis Cup. Good. Honestly, like, we be, we used to, yeah, like, I used to play, I used to play drums, we used to play guitar and sing, and like, we used to be in a band, obviously. Mm hmm Like, we'd come home, we'd be jamming, and, and like, if we were sober, I'd be like, fucking up, like, he'd be like, off, I'd be like, come on, man. And then we'd all be like, oh, we gotta go get high. And we'd come back. <laughs> we'd be on time. We'd be like, <laughs> just ripping it, you know? Like, we couldn't play a show if we were, like, mentally we'd be, like, scared. Like, damn, we didn't get high, like, we're gonna fuck Okay, up. so at what age did you start doing the pot? Probably, um, when I was 14 years old. Well, not, not too early. Not too <laughs> late. No, that's not too early at all. So you've obviously smoked all over the world on tour, but have you ever gotten in trouble for it? We were going to the show, we were going to play Ultra South Africa. 
and we're rolling up to the venue, and there's a big line of people who are just like attending the festival trying to get in. And I, so I said to the driver, I'm like, pass all these fools, like, <laughs> like we're playing, we're kind of late, like just drive past them. What so happened? Like, I had my, I'd gotten arrested like two weeks before this, and I had weed in my pocket. Because like everyone's like, don't worry about South Africa, it's really chill. And then, so I gave the weed to my tour manager, rolled up, cops started flipping out. He's like, where's the donka? He like stuck his head where's in the, the like at first he was giving a shit for like cutting the line, but then he stuck his head in and like smelled weed and like, he's like, where's the donka? And the cops start searching his bag. Mm -hmm. So as the bag, as he's searching his bag, I see my tour manager, Greg, take the weed from his pocket Put and it shove it ass. straight in his ass. And <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I jumped out of the car. I'm like, we don't fucking Search have anything. Me. Search me. Fuck yeah. I knew it was safe now. But. Okay, more importantly, did you smoke the weed from his butt? We did. Was it good? But it was like in three bags, so I felt like <laughs> <cool. laughs> it was the only shit we had. Well, you guys got out. Okay. So let's talk about your main hit, Tsunami. It's It was killer. It has almost 200 million views on YouTube. <laughs> Like five or six million records, and it That's just came out in a. It just came out in Pitch Perfect two, which is. Oh really? You know, like I, I didn't, I didn't even see the movie, but like <laughs> it went number one as a blockbuster hit. So now yeah. you guys are the Woozy Gang, right? What it's exactly crew, is like the Woozy Gang? It's our crew and our fans. You How know? do you it's get like, into it? Probably the most authentic way to become it is just like to smoke a blunt with us. <laughs> that would be like. Just like show that you're a humble person and just okay. enjoy like listening to music and being you know fun and turned up and spread positive. Okay, Dubs, well, I don't want to brag, but I played the drums until 10th grade, and I see you have a drum set over there, so what do you say we do a little jam session? I become part of the Woozy Gang. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm in. Good stuff, let's do it. Let's do some bases and shit. Hello, everybody. I am about to join the Woozy Gang via a jam session. Let's do it.